Welcome to Francis Quilts, the site dedicated to the wonderful art of quilting, with a few other fun things thrown in as well. If you like what you see here, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can be notified of future videos. Hey guys, welcome back to Francis Quilts. Today I'm continuing on my creative project, my creative journey to, uh, to recreate a Botero flower field and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you today is rinsing out the bat or the uh, stabilizer from the back of the cheesecloth. Uh, I just did it a few rinses or a few washes in some soapy water and warm soapy water. I let it soak for a little while while I had lunch and then just a quick rinse at the end and it was ready to go. Well here it is fresh out of the rinse water. Um, I think it's looking really good. I'm very excited with how the felting did on these. There are a couple that maybe are a little wispier than they were but I think that's still going to be okay. Um, it did shrink up a little bit when, I, when the um, uh, stabilizer was taken out. So it is a little more wrinkled in here than it was originally but actually I'm kind of happy about that. Uh, I don't have a certain size that I was going for so if it's changed sizes a little that's not a problem. Uh, and I think um, it's just going to give it that much more texture that can be peeking out underneath the flowers that I'm going to add next. Now I have moved to my garage. It is the end of June. I'm in the state of Georgia and it is hot, hot, hot here. Uh, probably middle to upper 90s at this point. Uh, so I'm going to be painting fast because things are going to dry fast, but it's a, it's a great area to work in. I'm very fortunate to have a second garage that allows me storage for things. And as we're heading to the garage, let's stop and look at this beautiful flower bed I have this year. Lots of uh, fun things growing, things about to plant. Once a deer quit eating them. Um, these beautiful butterflies, I want to point them out. My friend Rosie made those for me. And I had just realized the day that she gave them to me that I had this open spot in the, uh, the garden. So that was the perfect place for them. This is my favorite area back here. And all of the butterflies and bees love it. This big guy hasn't bloomed yet this year. Uh, we did have a late freeze, so that may have slowed him down a little bit. But I love this flower bed. It's the only place that I have in my yard that I can actually plant things. But I love that it's small, it's contained, and I can just fill it up with as much stuff as I want. But anyway, I've kind of digressed. But I want to show you the painting that I've done uh, on this piece and just talk you through it. It's a little long, you know, hit hit the, uh, the settings and, and speed it up so you don't have to watch it in, in real time. But I thought you might enjoy just seeing it in real time, hearing me say, oh, wish I hadn't done that, and oh, that color does not look good, what can I do to it? It was just kind of like this whole thing has been just a case of trial and error. So let's go and see what we can do. Well, I have all my supplies organized, my fabric, and I almost made a huge faux pas and started doing it on that way and realized that it actually, the, um, um, the part I've just done on the cheesecloth is going to be down here, not along there. I have my bowl that I use for mixing paints. I have my trusty mist sprayer, which I love. Um, as you, most of you know that have watched this at all, I do not consider myself a painter, so I use my trusty sea sponges for everything. I have water for cleaning my brushes. I have an extra bowl if I need it. I have my uh, iPad set with the inspiration that I'm going to kind of be looking at. Interestingly, as I looked at this, I thought it was blue, but I see that the sky really has more uh, pinks and, and purples and or violets in it. So maybe playing with that a little bit. I have my trusty drink to keep drink to keep me cool out here in the summer heat. And then my paints are here. And yes, the best inspiration of all, I have the broken recliner sitting here waiting to be taken to the dump. All right, everything's ready, so let's get started. Um, my first decision here is how far that bottom piece is going to be with the cheesecloth and how much is going to be sky. I think when I measured, I said that if I um, used this bottom piece plus a couple inches maybe, if I just folded it about like that, that was going to give me an idea of how much sky I wanted to have. In my case, it's going to have much less sky than, than um, bottom, but that's okay. So that kind of gives me a line to know where my sky is going to be. And I think I'm going to probably start on that first. I'll be honest with you, it's the part I'm most concerned about. So I think that's probably a good place to start. The way I do this, because I use the sponges and because I am looking for a very uh, modeled effect with not um, 
a lot of details on it. But the first thing I do is I spray with, uh, with some water. So let's just give it a good misting. Love a good mist bottle. If you don't have one, you should definitely get a mister. It's wonderful. Get it nice and wet. Could even take a brush and wet it more if I wanted to, but I think this is fine for now. I'm going to start out with a little bit of yellow in there. That's pretty bright, but that's what it looks like. I think it's a little too bright, but we'll deal with that. We'll start with it and then go from there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to this because I really want it to be very much a wash. I don't want it there to be any hard lines at all, so I'm going to add some water to it and dilute this paint down some. I'm going to dilute just a little bit more. Again, I'm using the mister to dilute so I don't get too much water at any one time. Okay. I don't really, let's see. I'm going to, because this is the, actually, I'll start with this one. This is the sponge that I'm going to start with, so I'm just going to put this paint on the sponge. Get it out of my brush as much as I can. I'm going to get some some paint on this sponge and I don't want my son to be right in the middle interestingly his is but I think I'm going to move it over a little bit here so I'm gonna have that's my my um, eye line with the the brown so I think I'm gonna bring my son kind of right in here and let's just start doing a little bit of of sponging around that looks all right let's sponge it a little bit more and bring it out a little bit and as I do this, I realize that I probably should have started on the background first, but that's okay. We'll blend it all together. Okay, I think I kind of like that. Now let's do a little bit of a reflection of the sun right down on this side. Now this is going to be mostly covered by the, um, the uh, uh, cheesecloth piece, but let's just put a little in here just to get a little something else. And I can always get rid of that if I need to or want to. The sponge is kind of coming apart. I hate that. It's brand new. All right, next I'm going to go for some of the creamy sky back here. And I think I'm gonna keep the yellow that I started out with. And let's add just a little bit of what color? Let's add a little bit of violet to it. Gotta get the pieces of sponge out of there, unfortunately. I can't use that one anymore. Let's add just a little bit of violet to it and see what that does. Maybe just that much. And do, do a little bit of mixing with my brush here. That's kind of a muddy color. But I wonder if I add some water to it. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to get anything from that. Let's add a little more, another dot of violet to it. And what I really think it needs is some white. So I'm going to put that in there too. Let's shake it up first. Put a little bit of white in there. Yeah, it's still pretty muddy. Let's add some more white. We may end up throwing this away and starting over with a different color. Yeah, I think that yellow may just be overpowering everything. But I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just do a little bit. Let's use my good sea sponge that I know works. Let's just put a little bit on here. Let me get that sponge wet. You know, that may have been the problem that I didn't get that sponge wet before I used it. I will try it again. Actually, let's try it again now. So that sponge is wet. Let's just get a little bit of this and let's just start. Okay, that's a little too yellow, but that's all right. Let's start over with a different color. This time we're going to start with some white, quite a bit of white. And just add 
a drop or two of a sky blue to it. One drop to start with. Okay, that's turning a pretty color. So I've got a little bit of yellow in there, but that's all right. Since it's hot out here, I think the fabric is getting is drying pretty fast, so let's really soak it this time before we, we start with some of the colors. I'm going to take this pretty sky blue on my damp sponge, and I'm just going to start putting colors in. And I may have messed it up by doing that yellow. I may have to start completely over, but we will see. That didn't get very far, so let's do it again. Let's make more this time. Obviously that white was not shaken up well the first time I used it because there's some globs in it that weren't in it the first time So that may make a difference too Yeah, that looks more like the paint's supposed to look so I hadn't shaken it well Let's give it a mix Yeah, I think I'm not ever going to be able to get rid of those yellows, but we'll see Let's just start and see how we go Yeah, this one is a little more opaque, so it's covering some of those yellows better. That's looking better. Let's put a little more water on it to make sure it has a, a good wet base that it's working on. And y'all laugh at my sponges, but it's how I paint. And it works, so I'm not going to complain. And boy, do I need to start making more paint when I make it up. All right, it won't be the same color, but that's okay. Let's start again. Oops. Come on, get in there. Two drops of blue and a whole lot of water. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we're going back to a similar color. I think that'll be all right. Let's load up the sponge again. Don't want to lose all that paint that's on that brush, so let's use that on the sponge first. Grab some more of it and off we go again. Moving around in here. It's getting there slowly starting to cover up some of that yellow that I put in. I want to put some in this area as well so that I have some overlap here that I'm going to be able to play with. And let's do this. Let's, uh, let's kind of wisp some of this out so that the sun is not just so, so bright. And remember when this dries, it's going to be um, much uh, um, paler than it is right now. It's going to dry to a lighter hue. Well, I'm out of blue again, so I think it's maybe time to add some of the little purples. Let's see if I can make a little light, light purple. Just a little bit, though, I think. I don't think I need too much. I love these little bits of blue that didn't get um, um, brushed in as well, uh, or mixed in as well. I, I think that looks good. Let's make a pretty good amount of this. I said a little, but let's make more in case we really, 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 really like it. Let's start with a little bit of purple, just or violet, just a drop. Come on, drop down there. Let go. Obviously that has something in it I probably should have taken off, but let's see how it works. Yeah, that's the nice thing about this stuff is you can normally mix it in pretty well if you just try it a little bit, play with it a little bit. Let's put another drop in there. There it goes. Oh, 
because I kind of like that color. Let's throw a little water in there just to dilute it a little bit. Maybe just a tiny bit more because I want this, this violet to go on pretty faint. Let's add some more. I want it to be really faint. Take my sponge, same one. I'm not cleaning it. I'm just going on to the next color. Let's load up a little bit on there and just start putting some little dots in here. Cover up a little more of that yellow as I go. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to be happy with the texture that this paint is getting on the surface, but we'll see. Let's get a little closer and we'll make a decision about that. You can always put some uh, water on it and um, just uh, uh, brush it in a little bit to get rid of some of the texture areas. Oh, that's actually looking okay. Wish I could have had a magic ball that would tell me exactly what it's going to look like when it was washed. But so far I like it. Okay, let's do what I said, because there may be some, some white spots in there where the white fabric is still um, uh, showing through that I just can't see because of the lighting that I have here. So I'm going to spray it really well with my water and then take then take a large brush and just do some, um, some kind of blending in here. I'm just kind of getting rid of a few of those uh, little um, divots of paint that you get from the sponge. Now, I love those little divots of paint, but I'm not sure you want them in the sky. Coming from here, I'm going to brush out from the sun so that I've got the rays coming out. I feel like I may need a little more paint over here. That's looking pretty sparse in there. Let's see if I have a little more in my bowl. Yeah, I can grab a little bit there and just put some more paint in through there. And this may be a case of having to uh, go in and let it dry and then uh, have a look at it and see if I need to do some more on it. Having trouble with my plastic getting messed up underneath it. I should have taped it down before I started, but I was in too big of a hurry. I couldn't do that. All right, let me hold it up so maybe I can see a little bit better. That's pretty light, but I kind of I think that may be okay. I'm thinking it may need just a little more blue in some areas. So let's start again. Let's do just a little. Uh, you know what? There's also some little dots of pink that I've seen in in seeing it when I'm looking at it. So I have this pink um, pearlescent magenta that I think I'm going to try. Let me shake it up. Well, just put a little bit in here. And again, I may ruin it at this point, but that's okay. I'm going to take that, and I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it because I don't want it to be much. And I'm going to take my sponge. Let's use the one that I started with that I said doesn't, didn't work as well. Now that it's wet, maybe it will. Let's take this one and just get a little bit of that. Let's just come in here. Oh, look at that. So note to self, always remember to uh, wet your sponges before you start working with them. Yeah, there's still some stuff coming off, but it's not as bad as it was. But yeah, little bits of pink in there, I like that. Let me have another look at the picture. Uh, there's actually an area of fairly deep violet in a couple of places, so am I happy with it? Am I not? You can probably see it better than I can because of the lighting. I don't know what to say. Well, I tell you what. Let's stop with it, with that part, and go on to the bottom. And maybe by the time I finish the bottom, this top will have dried. Honestly, as hot as it is out here, it probably will have. And I have to tell you this, for a visual, the sweat is starting to pour down my face now because of the, the heat out here. All right, let's get on to the bottom here. Now, you know what? I think this gold that I had done earlier, I may be able to turn into a brownie green, so that'll be perfect. Start by really spraying everything, getting all of those little bits of, of sponge off. I'm still not sure that sponge is completely done, but it may be. 
But I tell you, if this sponge ever dies, I'm going to be in deep trouble because I have used it on everything from painting a house many years ago, painting walls in a house, to all sorts of things. Okay, that ought to be good enough. Okay, let's add a little bit of brown to this and see if we can turn it into a pretty color as opposed to what it is right now. Uh, I have just a kind of a creamy brown. I'm going to add some to. And I kind of want this bottom to be a mixture of brown and green uh, because I think that will look nice as a background with the uh, cheesecloth over the top of it. That's pretty brown, but at least I've used that paint that I made that I wasn't happy with. So let's mix it up a little bit more all those colors in there. And let's start sponge and see what it looks like. Nice thing about this, if I don't like it, as you saw up here, I was able to cover up most of the, the yellow that I wasn't that happy with. Start down in the bottom here and just start putting some browns in. This one I don't mind if it has the modeled look from the sponge because um, this is going to be covered up with something else. And once again, I did not make enough paint, but that's okay because that means I can mix up a different color to add, uh, put over it. And let's bring a little bit of it up into there. Let's cover that up a little bit over there. So I think that's a little too bright. And honestly, that may be cut off when I get my final piece done. Okay, let's add some, do some different here. Let's go with an olivey green. Mix quite a bit of it, I think. Do I want to put a dot of brown in there or do I want to leave it how it is? I'll tell you what, I have this pewter I was interested in. Let's put just a drop of pewter in there and see what that does to it. Oops, two are coming out, so let's put two drops of pewter in there. Just mix them. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty dark. Let's see what happens if we really dilute it down a lot. That's looking better. I like that better. So let's do a little sponging with this one. Mixing it in with these uh, brown sponge spots I already have here. Yeah, that's pretty dark. I'm need going to have to do some work on that in a minute. But again, it's going to dry a lot um, paler than it is right here. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put a little bit of white in there. Just to see if we can lighten it up a little bit. You can tell I am a uh, perfectionist when it comes to mixing paints. <laughs> Dump it in and see what it looks like. I think that may be a little nicer. Whoops, I oh, wish I hadn't done that. Well, let's use that. Again, this is all going to be covered up with the um, um, with the, the cheesecloth, so it's all right. And I know my cheesecloth is mostly brown, but I really want it, I want some green to come through it. And I honestly don't mind if there's a little bit of white in this. I didn't really want it up in my skyline, but I really don't mind if there's some white in here because I think it will kind of um, just add a little more texture. I'm using that word a lot, but a little more texture to it. Again, come up in, this, in here just a little bit in some places. I think I may bring it up here a little bit more on this side because I'm going to... Uh, make sure that there's some flowers up there. And you know what? I probably shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. That edge is probably going to be trimmed off anyway. Don't you like how I think? You know, I kind of like that. I think that's looking really good. Let's do one thing. Let's put just a little tiny bit of a darker brown in there and see what happens. This is a sienna brown. 
I don't want much. And it doesn't look like I have much, so that may be good that I don't want much. Come on, give me a little dot in there. Whoa, didn't too much. That's all right. Let's add a lot of water. And let's mix it in with that green that's in there and see what happens. Ooh, that's too dark. Okay, I have to add some white to it. That might be okay. Let's just add a little more water to it and dilute it down as much as we can. And let's see what happens. Take my sponge. I'm just going to dip it in there a little bit. And I'm going to take this sponge and I'm going to tap it on here just to get a little bit of that off. Sometimes when you get a glob like I did right in here, it's because I have not d uh, dabbed off my sponge at all. I've just gone straight from, from the sponge to the fabric and you need just to dab it a little bit. I actually like that. I think that's a nice look. Fill in a few more of these little areas where there's some white. And actually, you know, it, it's not going to hurt to have a little more brown in here because I do, the, uh, the cheesecloth is more brown than it is green. And I'm hoping the cheese, I can't say the word, I'm hoping that the cheesecloth will uh, kind of sink into this. I'm not sure what that is. Let's get it off of there before it dries. And I'm sure those are little pieces of sponge from the other one. Really, I'm disappointed. That's a brand new set of sponges, and I hate that that one fell apart. Okay, what do you think? Have I got it? Have I got enough up in the sky? I think that's going to work out okay. Still a little bit of yellow over here, a little more than I had actually wanted, but I think that's okay. I think that's going to kind of give it a mirror sort of effect. Have this grass coming up here a little bit, which I, I like. Uh, some little dots of pink in there, a little bit of violet right in through here. So I think I'm going to call it quits and uh, take it inside and let it dry. And then uh, we'll see what happens next. All right, that's all finished now, waiting for it to dry. A uh, next step, hopefully in the next day or two, is going to be to attach that cheesecloth piece to, uh, to this piece that I just finished and then start doing some more thread work on it and doing adding some flowers and doing some other things just to continue to add layers to this piece. I'm actually thinking that I may put some more of this water soluble stabilizer uh, on the back of this. I'll need to make sure that my paints have set really well, uh, but I think I may do that just to give myself a little more stability as, I'm, as I am uh, doing the stitching because it has really made a huge, huge difference. So anyway, will it work? Who knows? Am I going to have a mess at the end? Maybe. Is it going to be a fun piece at the end? I certainly hope so. But the most important thing, and the thing that I have to remind myself, and I think we all have to remind ourselves, is that it's about the process. It isn't always about the finished product. It's about having a good time, learning new things, and enjoying our creative time. So with that little bit of philosophy, I'll say bye for now. See you later. Remember, if you like what you've seen, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please check out my website and daily blog at francisquilts.com, and I can be found on Facebook and Instagram at francisquilts. Thanks so much for joining me. Hope to see you again soon.